communication goes, we said that we need to make a compromise, right? What, how many compromises do you make? How do you compromise? How do you tell that something is not okay? We're going to discuss a little bit about how do you talk to your athletes and how you, your, you athletes talk to your coaches. Uh, we're going to look at two types of communication. One is how to tell somebody that they need to do something differently. And the other one is how do I listen to what my athlete is speaking about? Um, could we have an example? Okay, so uh, could I ask the two of you to play a coach and an athlete? And which would you be, the coach or the athlete? You're easy. Okay, so you, you choose. Athlete. Athlete, okay. So <laughs> you, get, you, get the, you get the coach. Okay. Let's say you have a problem. What would a problem be that you would need to discuss with your coach? Let's say that you have a problem perhaps with adapting your schedule because you're in the final year of high school and you have this big exam coming up and you cannot come to all the practices and you're asking him, how could you finish or how could you practice coordinate school and practice. So you come with a problem that you cannot come to all the practices. You have this situation that you need to discuss with your coach because he, he's a very strict coach. Okay, let's say that he's really strict. You have 10 practices, you need to come to all 10 practices, you cannot leave early. How is this going to look? No, you can't miss 10 practices, so we need to uh, look at the Look at your schedule. We need to maybe rearrange your schedule. Maybe we make the practice a little bit shorter, so it gives you more time to keep the ten practices. Uh, do you hear them? No. I prefer not to have uh, ten shorter practices. I prefer to stay longer because then I will not lose time between going and coming back. So I prefer to have less practices but longer. More boundary. Yeah, and so. stay and stay in my room to work my my. And <laughs> if I say to you as a coach. Are you capable to practice three hours on, yes, a, on a high level? Yes, I am. You are? I am, I am fit, yeah. Then we can make a solution. Okay, yeah. But I think that depends on which type of player you are, if you can hold your concentration for that long. Yeah, Normally, yeah. If, if the practice was two hours, and now you want to practice three hours, we have to, we have to look if you can hold your high level for that long. Yeah. Okay. And then you can. we will see after one month if we can. Okay. And if it's not, we go with my solution. So when we stop? Today. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Oh no no, she's your athlete. She's not, right now she's not your the world. She's fifteen. <laughs> okay. Was it a good discussion? Yes. Um, would this be a realistic discussion? No. I don't know. You have to know the capabilities of the player. Yes. And even from this perspective. If I was uh, an independent observer, and if I was just a little bit mad with you, or perhaps if I was just a little unsatisfied with my coach, and I was in your place, I would say he doubts that I'm able to do three hours practice. I do now he's, yes, there you go. And there he's, now he's going to be testing me for one whole month, just then to have his way a month later. Um, are these kind of conversations difficult? Yes. <clears throat> yes. Is it important to be able to carry out discussions like this? When the athlete is growing up, I think that communication is one of the most important parts that will maintain the good relationship. So athletes, when growing up, will have problems. They will need to coordinate school and sport. Some of you or some of the athletes are lucky enough to be practicing in environments where this is taken care of, but not all athletes have such a situation. And this will be one of the situations. Then you will face problems in competitions. The competition will not go as well as planned. They will be tired. Girls perhaps will decide that they don't want to practice with boys anymore because they keep getting defeated in practices and so on things will start happening and you will come to situations that you will need to resolve in discussions. And I would like to show you two techniques today, basically. 
on how to conduct a good conversation. Um, I would like to have two assistants, two students of mine. Uh, Darian? Bojože sodoloval. One of you is going to be a coach, and one of you is going to be the athlete. Who's going to be the athlete? Darian will be the athlete. Okay, Jože will be the coach. You both know the techniques that I'm speaking about, right? It's active listening and it's eye sentences. And they're going to demonstrate this. And while they prepare a situation in which they're going to demonstrate this, they're both basically techniques that were developed for a school environment because they found out that when school is a little bit less strict, when <laughs> teachers pay attention to what the students are doing, when they pay attention to their personalities, to their likings, where they pay respect to them, they're going to pay attention much more. And they were both developed by the same psychologist, by Thomas Gordon. Active listening has three parts. When somebody comes to you with a problem and you need to listen to them, uh, you just start listening to them and confirming. So you're just saying, mm hmm, okay, yes. So you're just paying attention to the person and listening to what they're saying. This helps us avoid the general problem that we have in communication, which is jumping to solutions. So coaches are all inclined, psychologists as well. Everybody who leads is inclined to people just, to just giving advice. So somebody comes, I have a problem with coordinating school and practice, you'll do this. But you need to take your time and listen to the situation of the person. So if we were going from scratch, you would start explaining. Right? You would say, I have more work at school, I have this big exam, we have to do group study, and so on. And you would be listening, mm-hmm, okay, yes. Right? And this first part is just act, just listening, just confirming what the person is saying. Then, of course, you cannot keep doing this for too long. And you say, okay, now I need to know more about this topic. And I would paraphrase. I would just turn around what the person has already said. So I would say, so it seems that you're very busy right now. And you would say, yes, yes, I am. And start explaining a little bit more. And once you've heard enough from her to form a real question, you would then ask the question. So would it be OK for you to have longer practices or suggest something? Right? Otherwise, it went very quickly. So you said, I have to much work and you would just go with the solution. Active listening means to take your time to listen and to give the other person time to explain their situations. So this is the beginning of the coach's job, right? To listen to the explanation of the problem. Of course, you have to be able to present the problem well. If you start and come, oh, I have problems, I have work, I have school, this, you're not making any sense to the coach. If you're able to use the second technique, which is I sentences, it means that you structure your sentence in a certain way. You tell them what actually happened, what the consequences are, and how that makes you feel. You will be an extra good athlete. Athletes usually don't know how to do that, but if you start learning, you'll be able to explain your problems better. So. You will tell them, tell your coach, this happened, this is the consequence of what happened, and it ha that's how it makes me feel. So for example, if you would use an I sentence in this situation, you would say, my teachers gave me extra work, and I don't have enough time to do the practices in the next two weeks, and I'm really worried about how this is going to go. So you would start with this, and you would say, mm-hmm, and you would start then explaining. You would listen actively, you would engage in explaining. And basically that is the perfect conversation. I know that it only happens in textbooks or exercises, but if you know that those two techniques exist, and you use it in your conversation, you increase your likelihood of coming to a to an agreement or to making a compromise. So you're more, it's a higher probability that you will both be speaking about the same things. Because what usually leads to arguments 
people speaking about two different things. So one is talking about pears, the other one about bananas, okay? And you're discussing different things. If you were both talking about apples, you would know what you're talking about, okay? Are you prepared for a demonstration? I have to start. You have to start, yes. Instead, I have to discuss about my different chemistry. Last year, I won almost everything for the competition, but now I know that with new, new ball, my defense play is almost impossible to uh, I I'm very disappointed. Uh, I want to win, I enjoy winning, but in the last tournament, I have no chance. I think that it's better to change my technique and in the future to train more technique play and more easy play because in other case I stop playing every time because I do not enjoy my my losing. <laughs> Do you think that we did it enough in training? I didn't change anything from training. We made the same, the same exercises in the same tournament. So it's um, what do you mean about this? I, 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 I think that I'm. Is something wrong on training? No, training it was super. Everything for this year, I enjoy training. But I know that uh, uh, nobody. I don't make any danger to my opinion is that it's uh, you, we, we, we should take time more time maybe you you, you cannot uh, you're not able to, to to adapt on this enough my my suggesting is that we should uh, try to, to keep going on because to change the technique can be really dangerous and then you will not be also on the dead level which you are because my suggest is that we just keep on going on and we can work together, we can find these small details which we have to find. It. I think that uh, you have trust in me and we can go. This is my suggestion. I cannot be sure what will be if you change the technique which you are in mind for 20 years. Okay, thank you. <laughs> was, it, was it difficult? Yes, right? Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, now uh, I'm sure that you, what did you notice from the two techniques that I explained earlier? Uh, Darian used the I sentence, right? So he explained what is happening, he explained the consequences, and he explained how that makes him feel. So normally, you can sit down, so thank you. <laughs> and he would explain uh, even more if he was a little bit more encouraged. Athletes, when you come explaining something to your coaches, tell them what happened, what is the consequence or the result of this event, and how that makes you feel. And it will get your coach's attention because if you just come, I cannot do this anymore. What can you not do this anymore? What, what is the problem? You need to explain your problem. The same goes for coaches. So if you feel that your athletes are not working the way you want them to work, use the same structure. What is actually happening? What is the consequence of this? And how that makes you feel? Coaches don't like to speak about your feelings, I know that. You can instead give an assumption, you can say, I don't think this is going the right, in the right way, but you need to add something. Why wouldn't you say, I'm worried that we're not doing the right thing, or I'm concerned this might not get results, because results, yes, of course, we are all there for results in the end. By the way of fun, yes? That's my point. <laughs> uh, so you can both use this structure. 
What I would like to see more from the coach in this situation would be a bit more, you, you were, I guess you were frustrated with the amount of the problem that he came up with. <laughs> I thought he would choose something more simple. Yeah. Six years old, yeah. she still wanted to be good. Yes, yeah, so like, right. Uh, but uh, when you're, it's not just about the verbal part. So it's not just pa saying yes, okay, I understand, I'm listening to you. It's also about the nonverbal part. So you should look at him, right? Not not stand like this. Or, oh, okay, right? But just face him, uh, and then he will know that he has your full attention. I have seen coaches have huge problems with this active listening. I've seen a coach do this, right? So you're the athlete, you're speaking to me, and I'm, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, 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 okay, okay, right? I'm on my phone, right? My focus is not on you, it's on my phone. So when somebody's explaining a problem, you, you should know, coaches, it's difficult for athletes to give a good description of their situation, especially if you're used to being very strict they not they're not afraid of you, but they think hard before they come to you with an explanation of a problem. So it's a difficult situation for them. Sometimes, yeah, and if they're afraid of you, then it will be so much harder for them to come ask something. And when they come and ask, let them know that you're listening to them, that you're paying attention to them. And for example, when you're trying to do this, you can basically see that you're discussing. And what you're doing as coaches with this technique is you're paying attention to your athletes. Because on the contrary of what we spoke earlier about 12-year-olds, a 15-year-old or a 17-year-old can decide a little bit on what they want. They know what they need because they've been doing this for a long time. And this is about the age where you need to start paying attention to their wishes, also from the perspective of how to structure your practice. They know what their body responds to. They know what gives them the most progress. And you should listen to them because you don't have this information. You don't feel their body, you don't feel their work out, you don't feel their practice, they feel their practice. When you're using this technique, be aware that it's a difficult process for them, listen to them, and then in the end, create a compromise.